you are not gonna make any money drop shipping. Well, the correction for that is you're not gonna make any money drop shipping if you're treating it like it's 2016. Over the last six years, I've seen so many people have success with drop shipping and so many people fail. And really the only difference between the people that are winning and losing is that the winners actually approach drop shipping differently than they did back in 2016. You see, back in 2016, it was super, super easy. You could just throw up a website, you really didn't have to do much with it, and just run these poor quality ads on Facebook and Instagram, people would click on them and they'd purchase from you. But Ever since that started taking off, people realized that they started doing the exact same thing. It got saturated. But the problem was around 2017, 2018, when everyone started hopping on this trend, was they didn't provide good customer service, they didn't provide good shipping times, and sometimes they didn't even ship out the product. That gave a bad taste in people's mouth about dropshipping, shopping online, and Facebook and Instagram. Well, they kind of put more strict regulations on dropshippers, which ultimately is actually a good thing for us because the people that do it correctly are gonna succeed. And actually all of these new restrictions are gonna kind of weed out the people that aren't really fit for the space or give it a bad name. So in 2024, to build out a good branded dropshipping store, we need to have our websites fully branded, fast shipping times, excellent customer service, and higher quality products. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the areas that you need to be focusing on in 2024 to run a successful branded dropshipping store. With that being said, let's jump right in. The first and arguably the most important thing when building out a branded dropshipping store is your website. Your website is the second touch point past the advertisement that led them onto the website, but it's essentially the most important thing in building a branded dropshipping store because when people go onto your website, it's kind of like their first impression and you don't want a potential customer that you're paying for to go on there and take a look at your website and it looks like it's built in 2015 with some sketchy timers on it and countdowns and sale ends in two more seconds or whatever, right? People just don't buy that anymore. They don't really fall for that. I mean, if you look at any of the big econ brands, no one is doing that. You need to attract them to your brand and convey trust. And you also wanna give them a good experience. Now you're probably asking yourself, what does a good website actually look like? I'll show you guys an example, but for one, the first thing is distinct brand colors that make it memorable. There's no point in trying to flash every single color in the rainbow on your website just to grab the viewer's attention or direct them to a certain link or area because one, it's gonna be an eyesore and two, they're not gonna really remember your brand colors associated with your brand. Now I pulled up some examples for you guys of what a good branded website looks like. This one here is Rise Superfoods right here. So you can see that they obviously have some custom images here that make it look like they actually took their time, right? And they went out, did a photo shoot. They didn't just pull their photos from AliExpress and pop them on here. It looks like a real brand, right? And there's just custom logos. The colorway is very aesthetic. It's very 2024, 2023-ish with these like cream lighter colors. And then the accent colors, it's kind of this burnt orange right here. You see these colors popping up a lot lately. And the ease of the website, it just flows so nicely, right? It's very easy to digest. There's not too many pop-ups. As I say that, there's one right now. But overall, it's just simple. You can read what you wanna read with the taglines. Is there some, like there's some blog posts down here. There's some really easy broken down sections here with the line main or what cordyceps, whatever's in this product right here. Overall, it's very digestible. There's no crazy countdown timers going on. Nothing's flagging you to click on this link. There's no sticky scroll add to cart button. There's nothing like that. Now, another website example that I wanted to bring up that you guys are probably more familiar with if you're interested in the drop shipping space is Blendjet. I'm sure you saw when this product was taking off. I mean, it was probably back in like 2018, 2016, somewhere around there. This obviously started off as a drop shipping website and there's just so many copycats of this, but they're doing the best and they're actually surviving and lasting longer than any other brand that's selling this exact product because they built a brand name and brand equity for themselves. Now, this is a more traditional looking website, right? Except they have a million, I don't I actually don't know if I like the way this is set up, but they have a million different colors and options now for their Blendjet. I don't know why you need so many specific colors, but overall the website looks great. It flows very nicely. It's very simple too. It's like, it, you still see these drop shipping elements, like these gifts on here of how the product works. They're a little bit shaky. They're not super, super high quality, but they look good and they flow nicely. It overall is just put together very nicely compared to the drop shipping competitor websites that are selling the same product, which you can just find on AliExpress. These are like $3 by the way, and they're selling them for $50. It's pretty insane. But again, it's the brand equity, right? And now let me show you an example of websites that you're probably probably building or you've tried to build before and why they actually do not work. All right, here is Cultivate. I mean, I really don't have to say much about this. It's obviously a major difference between this website in Rise or this website in Blendjet, right? You can see that it's just threw together as quickly as possible. There's no custom imaging, right? This is all like taken from AliExpress. Why do you need to know the centimeter height and width of the package? It just makes no sense. They're just throwing in some like filler images here because they don't have any and they didn't go out and get their own content or order it to their house. They've got a GIF here. It's fine, not too bad. 
it's just not structured nicely. Nothing is centered, right? So if you look at the, like the symmetry on BlendJet, everything flows nicely. There's some stuff on the left side here. We've got a GIF on the right side, but when we go back here, you can just see this. It's self-explanatory. It's This is centered, this is off to the left. It's small, there's multiple colors going on here. The logo doesn't really make any sense. The images here, I mean, they make sense, but they look like they're taken straight from AliExpress. The selection of the options here, are crazy. There's, uh, you know, emojis in some of them. There's just options that you don't even know what you're kind of getting and you don't really want to research it. And it makes you want to just run as fast as you can from this website. It's just not good. So you can clearly see why BlendJet or Rise would have a higher conversion rate than a website like this, right? That you threw up in maybe a day or two by yourself on Shopify. It just doesn't look trustworthy overall. And that's one of the biggest and most important things that you should be focusing on in 2024 is just advanced website design. That doesn't mean you have to go out and learn how to code yourself. You can use like a page builder like page fly where you can actually like you know replicate kind of brands like this in the function and the landing page of how it looks because it's all customizable and honestly a lot of the free shopify themes now allow you to build pages like this they're pretty customizable where you can drag and drop and what features that you can actually add to make it look better i don't know why this person didn't use any of these and i'm bagging on this website but it's just true right there's just no structure to this website now that we've covered the website the next thing that you need to be focusing on to build out a branded drop shipping store is focusing on customer service think about how important reviews are think about how important word of mouth is in building a brand and even in person at a retail store the way you interact with a customer or a worker or an employee there really sets your tone and mindset of do you like this store or this restaurant or do you not if you go into a place and they're always rude to you then you're probably not going to go back because you don't like that experience now understanding this think about what i was talking about earlier in this video in 2016 to 2018 when people were popping up drop shipping stores with terrible customer service not even shipping the product no email replies nothing it sets such a bad tone and you just cannot do that in 2020 you have to be on top of this. And all of the top e-com brands and online stores have the best customer service. Obviously, take a look at Amazon, right? So if you order a product to your house, it doesn't deliver, or they throw the package, or it's broken, or it's the wrong item, or whatever, there's really no questions asked. You just say, hey, I never received it, it was broken, blah, blah, blah. They're like, yep, send it back right away, or I'll send you a new one right now. Now, obviously, you don't have that kind of reach that Amazon does, but you can still implement great customer service on your personal brand. And as a side note, when you're building out your brand, you have to think of it as something that you own, that you want to put your name on. I really don't recommend you just look at it as some quick cash grab that you're just going to get a bunch of money from, not care about any of the customers, and then move on. It's just not going to to build a sustainable brand. Now I'm not saying you have to compare yourself to Amazon or become Amazon and accept every single return and there's like a you know 60 day money back guarantee like Costco or whatever. I'm not expecting you to eat all of those costs. What I really want you guys to focus on is just providing good customer service, answering people's question, have a frequently asked questions page. When someone emails you with a question about their order or whatever it may be, just hire a VA if you don't want to do it, but reply to these people. Otherwise you're going to get a ton of chargebacks, you're going to get bad reviews on Facebook and it's just going to end your store. Even if you're making money three months later, it's going to be shut down. You almost want to build a community and it's a benefit to them and it's a benefit to you because the more you communicate with the customer and you provide them a great customer service experience, they're going to recommend it to a friend or they're going to come back and buy another one. Or when you have a new item that you're selling, they might come back. So it's as simple as setting up email flows on your website to customers that have already purchased from you saying, Hey, how's everything going? Here's maybe like a little ebook to help you out with your product or, or here's like a little blog post or a community that we're starting or some sort of blog. It makes them feel like you really care about the brand you really care about them you want them to be a part of your brand in that community and a little goes a long way just saying hey how's your product how do you like it any you know complaints reviews anything we could work on people love seeing that people take their small business seriously you do see this a lot with like really legit small businesses that are kind of working out of their home or whatever they're always sending out thank you cards with their product they always want to reach out to you on instagram to see if we can give you free product to promote it makes the experience for the customer feel better overall and it makes them want to support you as a small business now, again, in the beginning, this can be easy to do, right? You probably have the time if you're not making that many sales right away to reply to the emails, make sure everyone's doing okay. But when you scale up your store, obviously your time and attention goes elsewhere because you're doing financials, orders, all this stuff, right? So at that point, once you've reached enough capital or you've built up your store enough, then you should be hiring a VA or someone locally to help you with this. The main point here is once you start building up your store, you're actually making some sales. Don't forget about your customer experience because it is so, so important for a long-term business. 
Now, the next thing that you need to focus on if you wanna build out a real branded drop shipping store is focusing on your product. And what I mean by that is kind of making your product custom. And that doesn't mean that you have to go out and get samples necessarily in, in new materials and silicone molds and all this stuff and make this brand new product that no one's ever seen before. But little things like private labeling your product, having it laser etched on the back of a phone case, whatever you're selling, right? It's really, really cheap to actually just reach out to your supplier and say, hey, you know, this is the phone case that I want. This one right here is just blank, but this is a phone case that I want and I wanna have an engraving on the back of my brand or engrave like little hearts or whatever your you know brand is, right? It makes it way more personal. They're not gonna find it probably anywhere else. And you also have your logo on it, therefore making your brand and product more credible in their eyes. And you can even take it one step further and you can do custom packaging as well with thank you cards. That's actually what we're gonna be doing for our pickleball brand. We are gonna be warehousing everything in my house. We're gonna have custom boxes, custom thank you cards, pretty much everything that you need to give a good customer service experience and feel like an authentic brand. Now you can take it even a step further and you can add customizable features of your product. Now this is a little bit harder. So once you've been in the market for a while now and you've been selling the product, it's private labeled everything. Maybe you've got some feedback from customers saying, hey, you know what? I wish that this phone case had a mag strip on the back or a card holder that I could attach or whatever, right? And you're like, hmm, you know, maybe I should upgrade the product a little bit. Then you reach out to the supplier and you're like, hey, could, what would I cost to actually just add this onto here because a lot of customers are asking for it. Or if your customers are telling you things that you've never even seen before, that's even better because now you have this like proprietary product if you could make it and get it actually completed with your supplier that no one else really has and a lot of people are wanting. Now all these things seem kind of hard to do, especially if you're a beginner, which you probably are watching this video. But a lot of the times if you find a good supplier, a good reliable quality supplier, they should be able to achieve all this for you with no problem. An example for me, I've been using my agent for about six years he's going to be doing all my pickleball paddle printing and the quality assurance checks. We're actually sourcing custom boxes from a different third party. It's pretty easy. You just go on Google and type in custom boxes. The thank you notes were getting printed from some company in the US that's just sending a thousand of them to us. So you can kind of piece together all these things with a quick Google search to find extra packaging or whatever, right? And if you still want to do it all through dropshipping, you don't want to warehouse any of your product, you just have your supplier do all of this for you or send them the custom packaging directly. That way at their warehouse, they can box up all of your orders with your custom packaging and your product from the manufacturer, and then you are good to go. It does seem a little bit hard, but I'm telling you, it's not that hard if you have a good quality supplier. And if you don't have a good quality supplier, go on my channel because I have a video on that on how to find one, which is a perfect segue into my next topic of building a solid brand, which is finding a quality supplier and having a quality supplier for your brand. If you've got a bad supplier, it can literally ruin your business. You can't ship out orders. Maybe they forget. Maybe they send out the wrong item. Maybe it takes 45 weeks to get to the customer. Maybe it's broken when it arrives, if you have any of these issues with your supplier, I'm gonna be honest with you, your business is not gonna last very long. And if you don't have that supply chain set up and that trust with your supplier, you're gonna run into so many headaches, the customer service issues, the returns, the chargebacks, it's gonna be a nightmare. Even if you scale up your business and you're all excited about getting $100,000 in a month, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a nightmare and you probably would wish that you didn't sell that many products before you set up your whole supply chain. And what I mean really by having a good supplier is someone that is essentially your business partner, because the more that you sell, the more that they're essentially selling as well, because they're taking some off the top. And so they're making more money too. So they should want to provide you a good service. If they provide you a good service, you can sell more confidently, and then they will sell more to you confidently. That's why I recommend agents for the most part. I've been using the same agent for six years now. They essentially act like a middleman between the manufacturer and you, and then also to your customer at the end. So agents are typically people that will directly work with the manufacturers that are making the product. They'll bring it back to their warehouse where their team ships and fulfills it for you and your customers. And the benefit of that is actually having more control of the supply chain and shipping options and routes. They also really only have a few jobs, which is just work with the manufacturers, get the product and then ship out the product efficiently. Versus if you're ordering directly from a manufacturer, I mean, every single manufacturer in China is, you know, making a hundred thousand different products. They don't really care about yours at all. They just don't. They're not going to listen to you. They're going to ship it out on a poor shipping method. It's going to be boxed up poorly, going to come in that yellow tape, you know, like that sample come in and stuff like that. It's just not going to be good. Again, I do have a full video on my channel on how to find good, reliable suppliers. So check that out after this one. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about when building out a branded website is your advertisements. Like I was saying earlier in the video, the ad is essentially the first contact point of your customer. And then they go onto your website, right? If they like your ad or your product. So an advertisement, honestly, it plays a massive role, even in comparison to the website build itself. Because if you don't have a good quality ad, people aren't going to click
click on it. And if they do click on it, it's probably by accident. And if it looks terrible, they're just expecting the product to be terrible. And maybe they just want to see the price of it or what the product is all about. You also have to remember with advertising, whether it's organic traffic or paid traffic, the customer is not really actively looking to see your product. It's really just being shown and thrown into their face. So building out that strong quality ad creative is so, so important because they didn't really ask to see it. Now your ads don't really have to be like hundred million dollar Super Bowl commercials or anything like that. I'm more saying to put some time, thought and effort into your marketing angles and the creative itself. Don't just take an AliExpress image and pop it onto Canva and then say like $29.99 with free shipping. This is what the product does. Those ads just don't work. You need to have high quality ad creatives and I've got great examples for you. So if you're looking to do static image ads, which I really recommend, especially right now in 2024, everyone's doing video. The scroll stopping ads are kind of the image ads. I could go on and on about that, but carousels and image ads are performing very, very well right now. And so I recommend this one play, it's Creative OS. So Creative OS is actually, it's pretty crazy. So they take the top image image ads from a ton of major brands, they let you use them as templates, right? And it updates every single week. It's pretty crazy. So if you like the ad format with the airdrop right here, let's just say this one, uh, and you have a before and after of your product or whatever it is, right? With the copy here, all you have to do is either copy to Figma or copy to Canva. It opens up that ad for you. And then you just plug your product right on there and change the copy if you want. All in all, I just want to throw this in there. It's definitely worth it because you can test so many different image ads so efficiently. There's just so many on here that you can plug into your product right onto Canva, take it, and it's good to go on Facebook, which allows you to test a ton of image ads really, really fast. This video is not even sponsored by Creative OS. I just really like them. I thought it was a really cool concept. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. I'll also have a link down below that you can check it out if you want to. So those are the things that you should be focusing on in 2024. If you want to build out an actual branded dropshipping website, that'll last you longer than just a couple of months of some income, right? We want to build sustainable businesses here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you guys some good insight into what it actually takes. And make sure if you want to get any free resources, free custom websites, all that stuff. I'll have everything linked down below in the description. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment down below on what video you want to see next or any comments. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.